for all our runner friends out there that are walking, running, standing with your feet turned out in that duck foot position, I have made this video today. I'm Coach Holly and I am gonna tell you exactly why your feet are turning out and give you very tangible fixes from a mobility and a strength perspective to get you running straighter. But no matter which way your feet are pointing, you are here at this video and you are a runner too. We are gonna get into right now where those problems start. Now, I hate to break it to you guys, but these duck feet didn't happen to you. You weren't born with them. You weren't doing, you weren't walking and you know crawling this way when you were little. This is a bigger issue and it comes down to how you're spending your time throughout the day. I'm gonna work through three little categories here of the most common causes of these duck feet. We're gonna start at the hips. And what I'm gonna start with is this imbalance in internal and external rotation. If you are someone who spends a lot of time sitting at your desk or in the car, you are keeping your hips tucked, you have them folded, you're really not working on that open extension, you're kind of folded up here, and as a result, the knees splay out, and you are kind of spending most of your time in this external hip rotation position. So we're kind of displayed here, you're just hunched at the desk, in the car, whatever it is, our hips get tight, and they just spend most of their time externally rotated. What happens in that way is when we stand up or when we try to run, we don't have that full open extension through the hip. And when we swing our leg back, our hips are only used to externally rotating this way. We don't have the strength even to keep our leg internally rotated to keep our feet straight. You know, that sounds like a mouthful right now, but what I'm trying to say is there is an imbalance here. The feet are turned out way more than they wanna be turned in, and that's from a lack of strength and then some extra tightness here. But maybe it's not the hips causing the problem here. It may be the feet and the ankles. You go into that running store, you go on that little jog, they take a look at your running, maybe they film you these days, they have all that fancy equipment, and they tell you, oh, you pronate a lot, or you supinate a lot, or you have a very neutral way that you land, they set you up with the appropriate shoe. I'm challenging you to take a deeper look on that and take ownership over how your feet land without the shoe getting involved. So what I mean by that is perfect world, you have a nice level of pronation, and a, what I mean by that is a little, uh, collapse of the arch, just small, that helps absorb shock as you run. So what I mean is the foot lands kind of on the outside of the foot, a little roll in to catch, and then you pick it back up again. Again, this is controlled. So you're both supinating and pronating in that land, but you have control over that. Now, some people with flatter feet, they were just born with very low arches. They're very used to having most of the surface area of their feet on the ground, those hit. They don't really feel one way or the other, right? Because you guys are just, completely in contact with the ground. Some people with really high arches sometimes feel like they're always rolled out in that way. This is a very complicated, sticky situation as you're gathering, but the main point of this, this is that if you overpronate, you spend too much time on the arches collapsed there, the response is often going to be the feet turning out. So you find this little duck foot position, the collapsed arch, whichever it is that caused it first, you're now creating this tension as a result. The body is just finding a way to land. You're just finding a way to kind of compensate and balance yourself. The collapsed arch, the turned out foot, that combo is really common because at the time, it feels like the right way to land in that feet. So that is the, the weak ankle syndrome there or the collapsed arch. Now the third common cause I see comes down to the level of ankle dorsiflexion you have. That's a fancy way of saying when you squat down, I'll actually show you guys forward, your ankles don't have the range of motion to get you down in a full squat with the feet straight. Whatever we don't practice regularly, we get stiff there. You're not gonna move in a range of motion, you're not practicing. So let me just show you an example here, guys. When I keep my feet totally straight, I start up nice and tall and I go down to that squat, I can get just barely towards parallel, if you see from the side, just barely here. This is as far as my ankles from the front will allow me to go. If I wanna go further in the squat, I have to turn my feet out to give my knees space to drop down lower. I, is this is the only way that I can actually find a deeper angle there to get myself lower to the ground. Coach Nate's gonna come out for a second right here. He's gonna show you a much nicer um, range of motion here with that dorsiflexion in the ankle. So when he goes down, you guys will see his feet are totally straight. He can really find that full depth in the squat. And that's because that front range of motion on the ankle, he practices this regularly. We will get into some fixes for this, but this is something he's really prioritized and he can stay in the bottom of the squat that way. Awesome. So whichever it is of these three things that happen to you first, 
that's what's going on, whether it was the hips, the ankles, the feet, you have this issue and we're gonna now get into why you compensate the way you do. The kicker here, guys, is that whatever it is that started this problem, you're gonna have elements of everything I just mentioned starting to come into play. These are compensations. The body is finding the path of least resistance to deal with the habits you're creating. And the less we practice those correct ranges of motion, the correct form throughout all of our running, walking, standing, we're gonna keep doing these things and it's gonna lead to injury and here's why. If my feet are turned out, all kinds of things like we talked about can start to happen, but when the knees collapse in, just little problems can arise. When those systems, those levers, pulleys of the body go out of whack, suddenly down the line, little things are rubbing, getting overworked, whatever, we don't know until they show up as injury. And so what I mean is, as the knees cave in a little bit, I could get a little Achilles back here, that could be starting to get overworked. The adductors start to work a little harder. My knees are just taking a lot more of an impact as I hit the ground, especially if I'm not using that correct pronation technique. Maybe my ankles are just getting a little bit more pounded. The list goes on, guys. There are so many things that can arise from this. So let's fix the problem. We're going for those straight positions because the body was made to use different muscles to control this, keep everything balanced and strong so that you can go for miles and miles, nice and straight the way you're supposed to. Nothing left to do but fix the problem. We're gonna start with some mobility work. This is gonna get those hips and the ankles loose enough and mobile enough to track in the right positions. That is the goal here. We're gonna start with a basic couch stretch. I'm gonna walk you guys through a few versions of this. If you're brand new to it, you'll be able to do it, or if you're more advanced, you'll get more of a stretch out of it. So first thing you're gonna do is find some surface back here, some vertical surface, a pole or a wall. And I'm gonna have a mat here for my knees and I'm gonna scooch all the way back up to this. I am gonna just bring one bent leg up back here and then leave the knee down. Other knee is just gonna come right in front here and I'm just gonna use my hands to put some weight on there and I'm gonna start by just pushing and tucking my hips forward. This is the first level of this stretch. All I'm doing is tucking that pelvis forward, trying to get my hips aligned and even. They're not twisted, I'm not sinking over here. I'm just first starting to feel that stretch. You should feel that hip flexor start to open up. For those of you sitting a lot, this one should already start to be burning a little bit here. After this, that second version of the stretch, you're gonna bring this foot forward, but leave the hands down. Other foot comes up. I'm gonna keep pressing and tucking those hips forward, breathing through this. Hands stay down here. And of course, guys, you're gonna be spending more time in this stretch. I'm just giving you your, your couple different versions here. The most advanced version of this couch stretch is actually all the way up to the top, pushing that hip forward, and you're just trying to find that nice vertical position, really working on opening up that hip. The more you can relax and let the front of this leg stretch, the more you'll get out of it. If I'm super tense and I'm just hunched over, holding on for dear life, I'm not doing anything more than I would be sitting. So pick a version that works for you guys. I want you to spend at least two minutes on each side. That's the first stretch there. Remember to safely come out of that and always keep that core on tight. Next up guys, we're getting into that internal rotation. So we're gonna use this PVC pipe or whatever you have lying around the house, broomstick will work just fine. And we're gonna use it to stretch and get comfortable in that internal rotation. And at the same time, loosening up all those external rotators that have been so overworked in all that sitting you've done. So you're gonna grab your pipe here or whatever you've got. We're gonna lay down. And all you're gonna do is hold this with the right hand. And I wanna say guys, this stretch would not be possible without this tool. You would have to have someone manually do this stretch for you. This is a really nice thing about it is you can do it yourself. So you're gonna hold this to the outside of the right leg. All I'm gonna do is lift this up to 90 and I'm gonna hook my foot in here like this. So kind of creating this awkward tension here, but you'll feel it's kind of stuck in there, which is the feeling you want. You're gonna drop the left leg down and I'm just gonna start to make a little contact with the low back on the mat so that my abs and core are engaged. If I let everything go, I'm not really practicing a good position, so we wanna keep that down. We're gonna use an active release, techno not technology, active release strategy here. And basically it's gonna ensure that we get a very deep range of motion on this stretch, increasing each time we try it. So I'm gonna use my left hand here as kind of the gear. This is just my shift here. I'm gonna use this to control my stretch. I'm gonna first pull this across to the most internally rotated I can be. Once I'm at that point, I'm gonna create tension where I press my leg into the pole, but pull my pole against the leg. So I'm gonna pull and press. You'll feel this when you do it, but two opposition, it's happening at the same time. Just hold about 10 seconds here, guys. On your big exhale, you're gonna release and go a little further in that internal stretch. 
this is the new starting point for the next time you hold. So again, I'm gonna find that tension, press that knee into the pole and the pole against the knee. Of course, this will take some strength from the arm here too. Nice big breath on the exhale. I go a little deeper in that stretch. To come out of it, slowly just release, unhook that foot. I want you guys to repeat that, that hold and the release four to six times each leg. I don't want you spending more than a minute there in this first time. You wanna get comfortable with this before you increase, but remember that flat back on the mat and always use your breath. Quick little note here, guys, for both of those stretches, you wanna be doing this for bettering yourself. It needs to feel good and it should feel like the right kind of pain. If you're getting this deep shooting pain in the knee during that one, you're doing it wrong, so I want you to back up the video, go through it again, make sure you're set up in the right way. This should be stretching the outside of the hip. It should feel like it's doing something that's undoing that tightness that's actually contributing to your overall well-being. Now that mobility work is no good if we're not also pairing it with strength. So I'm gonna give you two of my favorite strength exercises to get those feet going straight from the hips down, get everything working how we want it to. You're gonna start with a leg swing plus a lunge, and that's gonna look like this. I'm gonna stand on my left leg here nice and strong, tuck those hips, squeeze the butt, and then just relax those shoulders. All we're gonna do first is start with a light little leg swing to kind of get on our balance here. You're gonna find some opposition with the arm and the opposite leg, and you're just gonna find a nice straight foot position. If you let yourself relax on this one, this is a really good way to see just how much your hips wanna externally rotate. I know mine just go nuts if I let them. So this is what we're working on here. We're gonna pair this leg swing, we're gonna make it a little bigger, and we're gonna pair it with a reverse lunge. So, I'm gonna find that little leg swing here. From the front swing, as you guys come back, you're gonna drop into a reverse lunge here, and we're gonna have to force that knee to internally rotate from the hip, actually, and stay here before pushing off again to another leg swing. So we're gonna pair those two. So ideally, you're finding a rhythm here where you're pushing and pulling, keeping those hips in control, and you're always keeping the feet straight. From the side, it looks like this. I'm gonna stand on that right leg, swing up, and drop back here. You have to have that control. Don't let it swing out. That's what we're working on. Getting those internal rotating muscles firing with the hips tucked forward or openly extended. What I want you guys to do, and of course, whatever arm position makes sense, I like a little opposition there to feel balanced. You're gonna do 10 swing plus lunge on each side. You're gonna do three rounds of that. Now, journeying back to when I mentioned that some of you might have weak ankles, which is why you can't correctly track how your foot is landing in that right level of pronation on the ground, we're gonna work just on that right now. So, all you're gonna do is find something to hang on to. We are going to first start by just rolling up onto the balls of your feet. This is best done without your shoes on, so I've kicked mine off. You're gonna just start standing tall, and I'm gonna have you guys just play with the weight rolling forward, and you're just gonna come up onto the balls of the feet. Go as high as you can for a lot of you. It might only be an inch or two off the ground, but the main point of this one is to work on going slowly down. That's what we're focused on. So you go up and then slowly coming down. We're working on those ankles, having to control how you go up and how you come down. From going up on two feet, I want you guys to practice going down on one. So you can go up on two, come down on one foot there. And then ideally, this comes down to a single leg exercise. You're going up on one foot, and down, just working on slowly controlling that ankle up and down. If you can finally ditch the wall or the pole you're hanging on to, even better. Again, those hips tucked forward and abs on super tight are gonna be a contributors on that one too. You're doing three rounds of this, 10 each foot. Now, we're gonna use that mobility and strength work we did to get us running the way we want to. We're gonna put this into some drills right now. We're gonna start with a simple pulling drill. This is gonna be in place. We're gonna find a position that's right between a high knee and a butt kick. So we're gonna kind of find that figure four right there. You're just gonna start nice and simple standing straight by just pulling that foot off the ground. I'm gonna face you guys here too. What we're working on is how the foot is landing. If you come up and your foot is out to the side, you're kind of winged out there, that means you're overusing that ankle, you're flexing that foot. We don't want that because of course you're gonna land that way too. So you're gonna relax that ankle, it drops straight down, and just try a couple each side. Getting a feel for that position. Once that's feeling good, you're gonna take this into a little jog in place. I'm just gonna start nice and easy, and then I'm gonna start to throw those poles in. I'm trying to make sure that ankle stays relaxed so that I'm landing the way I'm supposed to, I'm not duck footing out. For the drill, you're gonna do 30 seconds just the right leg, 30 seconds just the left, and then 30 seconds together. So a little mini version of that, just the right leg. Once you feel comfortable, you can take it to every single step, then the left, or every other, 
And then the last 30 seconds, guys, in place, even adding a little arm swing in there. Try that for three rounds, that should do it. Now I'm gonna give you guys a great way to track your progress. Through all of this mobility and strength and drills, you wanna know that it's working. So all you're gonna do is find a line, paint stripe on the ground, whatever it is. I just have this little crack here. You're gonna use it as this midline to practice how your feet land. You're just gonna see how much do I turn out when I walk on this line? What is my natural tendency? Is it improving over time? I love to set my phone up low and actually film that to really get a good idea of how I'm walking. Remember guys, this isn't gonna happen overnight. If I'm someone who's super turned out, which actually I was even a few months ago, I'm not gonna fix this in just a couple of days. So you don't wanna drastically force your feet forward. Any bit of improvement is a huge victory for you. If you do realize that the hips are the main problem here, I want you guys to check out my video right here on internal and external rotation specifically for the hips. It should help you out. Good luck you guys. I know you can run with a little less duck foot down the road. Yeah.